Now, from the makers of Cold Water Irma... Mrs. Peel was paying a visit to McCombie's funeral parlor. She interviewed McCombie himself. Excuse me, do you happen to be the gentleman who dealt with the late Mr. Todd Hunter? Todd Hunter? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, the mahogany and walnut, the velvet-lined solid brass handles, the gothic style. I prefer the Corinthian fruited myself. Well, I've come here to pick up his personal effects. I have a written authorization here. There won't be an autopsy, will there? No, why should there be? The doctor signed the certificate. Thrombosis. You didn't notice anything peculiar about the body? Oh, slight bruise above the heart, that's all. His things are over... Oh, that's funny. It's gone. What's gone? One of those bleep gadgets for an answering service. It's gone, and yet I took it out of his pocket myself. His top pocket. It was clipped in his top pocket. About level with the heart? Yes. Yes, I suppose it would be. Just about on a level with the heart. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. is the wonderful new fabric conditioner that not only softens but actually rinses out hardness rinses in a new kind of softness comfort leaves your wash refreshingly young and bouncy again just a little comfort in the final rinse gives a lot of comfort to your wash softness is a thing called comfort Sherry Ann Field chooses Lux for her complexion I always use Lux I find it so very rich and creamy, and I love the perfume. Like Shirley Ann, choose Lux for your complexion. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 2 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel attempt to play at bulls and bears. And there is more trouble caused by someone's ability to... <laughs> ...dial a deadly number. John Steed, investigating the strange deaths of several company chairmen, had called upon Henry Boardman, the merchant banker. And over sherry and biscuits, had got to know a little of the company's business. He'd met John Harvey, Boardman's partner, and been invited to a dinner party. On the whole, it wasn't a bad afternoon's work. Steed had asked for the name of a reputable broker, and had been put on to Frederick Yule. That was Steed's next port of call. Yule's office gave evidence of his favourite hobby, fishing. Cases of stuffed fish lined the walls, and even when Yule was working, he was sorting out fishing tackle, tying on dry flies while talking on a phone cradled between his jaw and shoulder. It's declaration day tomorrow. The shares have gone down a pound. You have options for 10,000. So, I leave the arithmetic to you. Now, look, the intercom's going. I'll call you later. Yes? Mr. Steed is still waiting, Mr. Yule. All right. Show him in, please. Mr. Steed. Ah, come in, Mr. Steed, come in. Uh, that'll be all, Suzanne. Uh, sorry to keep you, Mr. Steed. I understand that Boardman sent you. How is Henry? Flourishing. Yes. Yeah. Now, what can I do for you? Tell me, do, do you know a company called Castle's Tin? Yes. Well, Chappie in my club seems to think they're a good speculation. There are two occasions in a man's life when he shouldn't speculate. When he can afford it and when he can't. Yes, well, thank you for the advice. That's not mine. Mark Twain. Now, he was another fisherman. There's nothing to touch it, you know, fishing. The thrill of pulling in a really big one. Uh, do you fish, Mr. Steed? Well, you might say uh, I was always fishing around. Yeah, I can't get away as often as I should like. You know, Scotland, the place, you know. Caught a salmon last year. As big as... Well, it was pretty big. <laughs> now, can I offer you some the sherry and biscuits? Yes, yes thank you. Yes, yeah. yeah, Suzanne. See to the sherry and biscuits, will you please? Yes, Mr. Yule. Eh, now, where were we? 
Castle's Tin. No, that's right. Dirty sort of company. Uh, the friend who gave you the tip's having a lot of success on the market lately. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> must admit, I, I don't understand how the share's gone down every day, but he's still coining it in. Yeah, can be done. You can make money out of failure? Ever heard of a thing called a put option? Vaguely. Uh, you take a put option when you think the share price is going to fall. You start by selling the shares, the price drops, or you hope it does, and you have an option to buy them back at the new low price. The difference is yours. Hmm, complex. Uh, definitely not for the amateur. Yeah, but very profitable when you pull it off. The whole thing depends on the shares falling in price. Yeah. Of course, if you had the means of foreseeing the future and perhaps influencing... Yeah, that would be another thing entirely. Yeah, what was the name of the company your friend dabbled in? Todd Hunters. Uh, <laughs> oh, stupid of me. Stuck a hook in my thumb. <laughs> I understand it was quite a killing. You looked up from his fishing tackle in mild surprise. Well, that is the correct term, isn't it? Shame, Mr. Yule. Ah. I think you should know that amalgamated industries are down two points. And Ben Jago is on the phone. Shall I have him put through to you here? Uh, no, no, no. I'll go outside and speak to him. Uh, we must buy 20,000 amalgamated at once. I won't be a moment, Mr. Steed. Uh, help yourself to Sherry. Uh, Suzanne will show you some investment prospects while you wait. Suzanne poured the sherry and handed Steed a glass. Then she took from her filing cabinet a sheaf of papers. I think I should explain. I, I'm just a babe in the financial woods. Uh, perhaps you could help me with the finer points. Well, I'll try. Steed perched himself on the desk, very near to Yule's secretary. Keep your eyes on the folio, Steed. This is just a suggested portfolio. It means that your capital would be spread equally through the key industries. So much in steel, so much in oil, so much in industrials, and so on. Fascinating. This suggested scheme would mean an initial investment of about £50,000 in round figures. Round figures, eh? Not those kind of round figures, Steed. There really isn't much more to explain. It's all straightforward enough. Our investment suggestions are carefully selected, tried and tested. By Ben Jago? He he is a client of yours, isn't he? His name is banded around the city as a man to watch. Oh, yes, yes, he's very successful. One of our best clients. Mm, How does it go? Crystal ball? Foresight? I mean, he does dabble a lot in put options, doesn't he? Always one jump ahead, sensing when the market's going to be just right. Well, experience, I suppose. Uh, Nevertheless, it, it is uncanny sometimes, like his last success. Oh, and that was... Uh, Todd Hunter and Company. He took out options a week ago, holding them for 100000 and it paid off. Still, that's Ben Jago for you. It was inevitable that John Steed should find his way to the bar of the Bull and Bear. That's where the money action is, and that's where one had a jolly good chance of meeting Ben Jago. A loudspeaker was giving the latest information as Steed entered and headed for a corner table. Coppers were quietly firm but made a mixed shine. Oils hardened, but rubbers were neglected. Banking and insurance shares were on the dull side. Oh, waiter! What the devil is a blue chip special? Oh, it's one layer of prawns, one a scrambled egg, mayonnaise and roughly toasted rye bread. I can recommend it, sir. Oh, good, then at least one of us will enjoy it. A coffee, sir? A quinoa with just a dash. Um, a vodka to start with. Thank you, sir. Of course you share it while you're waiting. Uh, it'll take far too long. <laughs> Anything further, sir? Um, yes, is, is Mr. Ben Jago in here? Oh, yes, sir. There he is, sir. Look, down, down there at the end of the bar, making notes on the back of an envelope. That's Mr. Jago. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, waiter. Steed tipped the waiter, casually picked up his newspaper, and noticing a very attractively dressed woman leave Jago's side, moved across to the stool. Jago was still doing calculations when Steed said, Um, Excuse me, aren't you Ben Jago? Yes, that's right. We share the same broker. Charlie Bingham. No, no, Ewell, Brian Ewell. (laughs) One can't be too careful. Uh, Sit down, Mr... Uh, Steed, John Steed. I do apologize for the interruption. No, not at all, not at all. They put you into Gibbs Electronics? Uh, Not yet, no. See, they don't. I don't like the smell of them. Oh, well, thank you for the tip. Uh, You're right, sir. Oh, thank you. No ice. House rules, sir. Really? Oh, a dealer from Wall Street once asked for a bourbon on the rocks. Two brokers dropped dead on the spot. <laughs> Tell me, Jacob, how is all this done? I mean, it's as remote as water dividing to me. Oh, mainly by guess and good luck. Oh, I don't believe it. 
Ben Jager, one of the shrewdest in the city. That's what my guidebook says. <laughs> then it's time to buy yourself another guidebook. No rules you can offer me? Buy when they're friendless. Never wrong to take a profit. They're only half-truths. All of them. How do you know about Todd Hunters, for instance? I mean, that was more than a half-truth. It was a hot tip from our broker. I wish he told me about it. Patience, Mr. Steed, patience. There's a devil a lot of fiddling before Rome was burned, you know. <laughs> yes, well, just remember if there's a fiddle going on, I'd like to get in on it. Don't take too many risks. Remember, even Nero got his fingers scorched. Good day, Mr. Steed. John Steed wondered vaguely what Mrs. Peel had been up to. He hoped she wasn't branching out on her own and getting into trouble. Knowing Mrs. Peel as he did, that was a forlorn hope. She'd been checking on the possessions of the late Mr. Todd Hunter, and when she'd found out that the transistor receiver that he carried for the answering service was missing, she immediately started to check up. In the foyer of Warner's answering service, she paused at the desk and rang the bell. Oh, good afternoon. I'm J.P. Warner of Warner's Answering Service. Can I help you? Yes. I'd like to know more about the service you offer. Oh, splendid in its simplicity, Miss... Um... Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Peel. Ah, yes. The scheme operates along the lines of many used in hospitals. Subscriber carries a bleep on his person. And then if he's ever wanted, the machine bleeps and he takes a radio message telling him who wants him and what the telephone number is. What's the range of this service? The scheme is, in the main, confined to the city of London. I see. So it's more or less limited to brokers and financiers, etc. Oh, uh, that's the idea. At that moment, a man came down the steps. He held a tool bag in one hand. Emma frowned. He looked familiar. It ought to be all right now, Mr. Warner. Needed rewiring, that's all. Oh, splendid, Fitch, splendid. Thank you. Um, who was that man? Anyone important? Oh, no, 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 no. No, Fitch is the resident mechanic. Quite bright. Back room boy in the war, I'm told. Now, uh, Mrs. Peel. You supply one of these bleep devices to a relative of mine, a uh, Mr. Norman Todd Hunter. Tell me, Mr. Warner, did you ever get it back? Should we have done? Yes. He died. It's missing. I wondered, did you ever get it back? Well, Mr. Warner, did you? And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. <laughs> Great work, Jimmy. Do you play any other sport? Yes, Dominoes. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. The cleaning power of cold water Omo gives you the superb cleanness you want from a washing powder. Listen to Mrs. Baxter of Claremont. It really is good, you know. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that, that it could be so good, you know. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.